All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. For those of you that are new here, my name is Drew Sims, and for three plus years, I lived out of my Jeep as a photographer and a filmmaker. I'm no longer living full time on the road, and I'm actually based out of Salt Lake City now. I'm up in American Fort Canyon right now, and it's a very windy and hot Utah day, so I found some shade and figured it'd be a good as time as any to show you guys an updated tour of the Jeep. Since I'm no longer living full time on the road, I wanted to rip apart the old build and just build out a completely new setup that was a lot more clean and just kind of streamlined versus the old one, which was a bit cluttered and 
supported me living out of it for three and a half years, so it's definitely in need of an upgrade. If you guys are interested in the build process, I did a video previous to this one that shows the whole thing from start to finish. Ripping out the old build, ripping out the seats, cleaning the entire inside of the Jeep, sound detonating, raptor lining the Jeep, fixing a bunch of leaks, adding a snorkel, and just a bunch of other stuff. It ended up taking me about two weeks to do the entire build from cutting all the wood, tearing out the old build, and then finally staining and sealing all the wood on the interior. Really happy how it all turned out and very excited to show you guys. I did my last tour video about a year ago and not too much has changed on the exterior of the Jeep. If you guys wanna see the exterior in more detail, I'll link that video down below as well. I will show you guys kind of what I've added and, and what I've taken away on the exterior and then we'll move to the inside. And then on the back end of the video, I'm gonna show you guys the first night sleeping out of the new setup. The Jeep itself is a 2013 four-door Jeep Wrangler Sport. I left Florida in 2018 with about 75,000 miles on it, and now just recently hit 160,000. So I've definitely put the Jeep through its paces and no major mechanical issues over the past couple of years. And I have had some issues recently, I had to spend a couple grand just to get it fixed up, but nothing too crazy for you know putting 90,000 miles on it basically over the past three years. I do wanna mention that when I left Florida, I left with a Jeep pretty much stock outside of the hard top, the roof rack, and the rooftop tent. And I mentioned that because I think it's important to understand that you don't need a crazy setup like this. You don't need a lift and tires and bumpers and winches and all that. I, I started the trip pretty basic and this Jeep's been able to get me pretty much everywhere I've wanted to go. And all this gear has been an accumulation of three plus years. Up front, I've got a Quadratech bumper, a worn Xeon 10S winch. I haven't really had to use the winch too much, but when I have needed it, it's come in handy and, and been pretty bulletproof. I've got some KC running lights and then just some D-rings up front that I got off Amazon. Coming to the side of the Jeep, you guys can see the big exterior upgrade, which is the AEV snorkel. This has been something I've wanted to do for the past three and a half years, and I absolutely love the way it looks in the Jeep. I think it looks awesome. I don't know how many major water crossings I'm gonna be doing in my Jeep, but this is more so just to help with dirt and dust on the trails. So the Jeep is sitting on a two inch old main emu lift and I'm running Toyo Open Country 33 inch all terrains. There's honestly been nowhere that I haven't been able to get running 33s for you know crazy campsites I get to and, and pretty, pretty gnarly roads. 33s and a two inch lift have been more than enough for me. These are probably one of my favorite accessories on the Jeep and I got these actually just off of Amazon. There are these little pop down steps and they just help you access the rooftop tent, access the back, or if I need to adjust anything on the solar panel, these are just very, very convenient. As you guys can see, the back of the Jeep has gotten a bit of a facelift since the last tour video. I added this GP factor mount that hooks onto the TerraFlex hinge and that just adds this little two gallon Rotopax. I did add a lock to the Rotopax as well. I had a Rotopax fall off recently because it just came loose and Lost it on a trail, so I, I bought the locking mechanism for it. Then on the back, also I've got a pair of Max Tracks. I don't know how I went three and a half years living out of my Jeep without a pair of Max Tracks, especially with all the off-roading and four service roads I get myself into. And this is actually just mounted to my old Rotopax mount that I had in the spare tire. And I've got it running with Max Tracks mounts and then a little lock here. I ended up just zip tying them together too, just for extra security. And if I need to use them, I'll just cut the zip ties and then zip tie them again after. Up top, I'm still running the Pelican 85 cargo case. Honestly, a little disappointed with this case. I've only had it for about a year and a half now. Considering Pelican is such a well-known brand, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed that the latches have rusted. It, it leaks quite a bit and scrapes up super easily on the trails. I'd love to run a Rome case up there and actually reached out to them to work. I think they're a much better looking case. And from what I've heard, they're much more durable than my current setup. But unfortunately, my roof rack can't fit a Rome case. So for now, I'm gonna have to to stick with the Pelican. In the Pelican, I usually store things that I don't access on a regular basis. I've got some camping equipment, a saw up there, and then uh, iCamper cooking disc as well. I do use the iCamper cooking disc quite a bit. It, it's super fun to use that over a fire or just use it with the setup. Uh, but it takes up a little bit of room, so I, I keep it up there in the Pelican. You guys can see on the exterior of the Pelican, I've got a new ax mount. I used to have a shower up there. Sadly, the shower is gone after three and a half years on the road. It just made more sense to get rid of it and the, the mounts were kind of failing on me. I didn't want to redo the whole setup. So I got rid of the shower and cleaned up the back here and I'm running these Rhino Rack mounts for the ax. It's drilled directly into the Pelican case and seems like it's pretty secure up there versus those little 
clamps you can get off of Amazon for shovels and axes. This actually has a locking mechanism in it. It is a bit pricier, but the peace of mind for me while going 80 down a highway or going down a trail and not having to worry about the ax fall off is, is worth it. Also on the back here, and probably one of my favorite new additions to the build is this little pressurized water system. So I've got a one gallon per minute pump on the inside connected to a five gallon jerry can, and that runs out back. I've got a little rubber covering here just so no dirt or dust gets in. The whole system runs off quick disconnects, so it's super easy to use. I've got a front runner faucet hooked up to a quick disconnect as well as a hose hooked up so I can shower off or just wash my feet off or wash my face. Pressurized water is something I've wanted for a while now and it just makes camping a little bit easier. Big shout out to Kramer Junction for the inspiration behind this pressurized water system. He's got a really great video that shows the whole process from start to finish on how to set this up. So I'll make sure to link that down below in the description if you guys are interested. I'm still running the Smitty Built Safari Hardtop. We ended up resealing the windows when we did the rebuild on the Jeep and so far it's held up really nicely. On the side, I've got a Easy On 270 awning. It's a 270 awning, so it goes all the way around to the back of the Jeep and honestly probably takes a minute to set up and a minute to put down, so really, really convenient. And lastly, on the exterior of the Jeep, I recently upgraded to the iCamper SkyCamp Mini 3.0 and added a Sirius Survival 100 watt solar panel on top of that. The new iCamper is pretty similar to the previous model. It has the exact same setup time, which is roughly around a minute, which is one of my favorite features about an iCamper. It also weighs in still at 125 pounds, but some big upgrades that they did add were upgraded YKK zippers, so they just don't snag as easily and they're just higher quality. They also added a new thicker mattress with a quilted insulator, basically just adding more comfort to the mattress as well as warmth. They also improved the aerodynamics of the hard shell, so you can now add more storage on the inside of the tent. Originally, I could keep maybe a sleeping bag and a pillow up there on the 2.0, but with the new upgraded 3.0, I can actually keep two sleeping bags and two pillows up there comfortably without having to struggle while trying to close the tent. All in all, I've really been enjoying the Sky Camp Mini 3.0. It's definitely an upgrade. It's definitely more comfortable and excited to spend more nights out of it. Moving on to the interior of the Jeep, I want to start by giving a big thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video as well as sponsoring the build. Pretty much the entire height of this new build was based around fitting Jackery's new Explorer 2000 Pro in the Jeep. The Explorer 2000 Pro is Jackery's largest model to date with a 2200 watt inverter and a 4400 watt peak surge. They've also upgraded the look of the Jackery with a more sleek design now. They've got a display that shows input output watts as well as time to charge and discharge and battery percentage. The Explorer 2000 Pro comes with three AC outlets, two 100 watt USB-C ports, two USB quick charge ports, as well as one 12 volt port. This new model also supports pass-through charging, which allows you to charge your power station while simultaneously charging your gear. I've been using an electric kettle recently off of this, and I think it's a great addition to the setup. It only brings down the battery by two to 3%, so having a larger battery like this is gonna allow me to run more accessories. The Explorer 2000 Pro weighs in at 43 pounds versus my previous battery, which was the Explorer 1000, that was 22 pounds. It's 15 inches wide, 10 and a half long, and 12 inches tall, versus the Explorer 1000, which was 13 inches wide, nine and a half long, and 11 inches tall. It's not that much bigger in size for the extra power that you get. It does weigh a bit more, but I think it's a good trade-off. The biggest upgrade, in my opinion, that Jackery put in is this collapsible handle. I know it doesn't sound like much, but being able to store this in tighter spaces without a two-inch handle always having to be up makes a huge difference. There's three ways to charge this new power station. One is with the built-in AC wall charger, so you no longer need a large external brick. When using this method, you can charge the battery from zero to 100 in just two hours. The next is a 12 volt charger that you can charge off the cigarette lighter in your vehicle. And this takes about 24 hours from zero to 100%. And lastly is through solar. The back has two DC inputs for panels. This is the first model that you can charge up to 1200 watts of input by combining six 200 watt solar saga panels and using Jackery solar series connectors. This technically means that you can charge with solar from zero to 100 in under 2.5 hours. The Explorer 2000 Pro seems like a great battery for van lifers or people that are doing more long distance on the road. For me, I'm working on my laptop quite a bit. I'm charging a lot of camera gear while I'm on the road. So I think this thing is definitely gonna come in handy. Jackery's actually running a Father's Day sale coming up here on June 10th to the 19th, where you can get 15% off select Jackery items. You can actually get 10% off the Explorer 2000 Pro. So make sure you guys head to jackery.com to get some gear of your own. And big thanks again to Jackery for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring this build. 
Behind the driver's seat, I've got my camera drawer. All the drawers in the Jeep now have these compression latches, which are great because they're locking. It basically hooks onto a piece of wood underneath the bed. Not only is it good because they lock to prevent people from getting in, but it also just helps going down trails. Nothing's really moving and everything stays secure. Inside the camera drawer, I've got drone, controller, camera, lens, speaker, some filters, camera strap, and then a little Garmin inReach, which is great to have if you're doing any backcountry camping or just getting out of service, it's nice to have a little backup. Everything in the camera drawer is secured with this little foam cutout. I had this in my last setup and it just so happened that it fit nicely in here and just helps keep everything in place. Behind the driver's seat, I've got a trash can that I can actually access while driving, which is nice. Then I've also got two gallon jugs of water. I've got that five gallon tank that's pressurized, but I usually like to keep that just for cooking and cleaning and I have these little two gallon jugs for drinking. Next to the Jackery, I've got this little Filson case that I keep all my drone batteries in, my charging cables and all of that good stuff. Then I've got an extra tripod here. Behind the Jackery, I've also got some extra storage that I keep things like uh, sleeping bags, sleeping pad, hammocks, some camping equipment that I don't need on a regular basis. And I also recently got a Flare espresso maker. So I'm really excited to try this out and have some espresso on the road. I, I know it seems kind of bougie, but it's nice to have a good cup of coffee. And then up top, I've got this little sax cloth and ashes blanket. I had one of my previous setup that was kind of like a tribal pattern, and this one's been really nice. It's a little bit thinner and just a little more comfortable. Moving to the passenger side, we have another drawer. This is kind of all my clothes on this side. Another compression latch here, some shirts up top, and then down below, I actually have two levels separated with a piece of wood. And the top is socks and underwear, and the bottom is pants and shorts. And I just got these little organizers off Amazon just to keep everything nice and clean. Also behind the passenger seat, I have a pair of boots as well as some trail running shoes. One of my favorite upgrades on the Jeep is just having this empty space here. This is a nice work table if I need to organize my camera bag or just get groceries or anything and don't wanna pack them away. This is just nice to have a little workspace and a table here that's flat and always open. It also just makes the Jeep feel much more open versus my previous setup. I used to have a closet in my Jeep and every time I turn around, It'd be a big piece of wood here. The bed was four or five inches taller and it just seemed much more cram. Up top here, I have a camping chair stored. And then on the side, I've got an extra pillow as well as a twin size comforter and duvet. This is nice so that sleeping in the Jeep, I don't have to sleep in a sleeping bag every night. And the duvet fits really nicely up in the eye camper as well. Now, finally moving on to the back of the Jeep. If you guys saw my previous setup, right away you should be able to tell how much lower this is versus my last bed setup. This is actually one inch thicker than my previous mattress, but sits about four to five inches lower than what it was at before. I'm actually able to sit up now completely and work on my laptop. I can flip around easily and kind of navigate the interior of the Jeep a little better than what it was before. I'm still running the Dometic CFX35, really enjoying it still. It, it works really well for one person or two people for a week on the road. And I feel like I can usually stretch it to six to eight days without having to go to a grocery store. A really cool addition to this back setup are these XG Cargo Stealth Gamma Bags. They actually connect straight to the roll bar and are great for storage. I've got pots and pans in one. I've got dish soap and dish brush and just some other cooking utensils in the other. And just frees up a lot of unused space and keeps everything really organized, which I love. And the functionality, having the outside, you can actually clip things to them. I've, I've really been enjoying using these bags and definitely opens up some more storage, which is nice. My whole cooking setup has kind of changed. I used to have that three tier system that pulled out. Now my cooking platform is this little front runner table and I'm running a Coleman Peak One propane stove off of that. My whole design behind this new kitchen is having kind of an L-shaped workspace. So I now have this cutting board and then the cooking setup is there and I can still access the fridge, which is nice. Definitely one of my favorite new features of the cooking setup are these little magnetic spice holders. I just got these from Ikea and then ordered some magnets from Amazon. I was worried they wouldn't stay in place, but I've been kind of bumping around pretty rough for service roads the past couple of days and nothing has moved around. They've held up really well. It's also really convenient having these magnets because they hook directly onto the front runner table. So I can actually have my spices up top while I'm cooking and really loving the functionality of the new kitchen setup. With the way the fridge and the bed are set up, it kind of left room for this 
tiny little pull-out drawer and I ended up adding dividers in here so I could hold silverware. And add a little bottle opener on the outside as the handle. Well, the first drawer on the left here, I've got all my coffee equipment as well as some pans and then the rest is food storage. I did have a bigger pantry in my last build, but now that I'm not living full time on the road, this seems like a good enough space so far. I know a lot of people say having this coffee set up is a waste of space, but I love having everything secure and I just really like how it looks in the setup. So on this side, I've got my stove, some propane, a cooking towel, and then this little camping flask, which are great for drinking wine or maybe a gin and tonic, who knows. Also in the back right next to the fridge is the Jackery solar panel. Did not plan that out, but it fits perfectly in there, which worked out nicely. And lastly, it's probably one of the biggest upgrades in this setup, and that is the bed. So the sleeping platform before was about five inches taller, and my mattress, I think, was a four-inch foam mattress. This is now a two-inch topper with a three-inch topper on top, so I've got five inches. Definitely more comfortable and much more spacious than my last setup. The driver's seat pushes forward. I've got a piece of wood that comes out, and then a foam cutout that sits there that makes the entire bed space about 75 inches. I wanted to make the whole bed space a bit more versatile. So I actually added the same thing to the passenger side. So if my girlfriend goes camping with me and it's gonna be cold or raining a lot where we're headed, I'll bring a second foam cutout and that actually creates a pretty decent sleepable space for two in this Jeep. We had slept two in my previous setup, but it was very cramped. So having this extra bit of room and more space would be nice if her and I are going camping and we need to sleep in the Jeep for some reason. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the tour portion of this video. I didn't wanna do a super in-depth dive into all the equipment I have and tell you guys the name of every single piece of gear that I own. This was more so just to show you the upgrades on the exterior of the Jeep, as well as the entire new build setup on the inside. But I hope you guys enjoyed the new setup and enjoy the new look of the Jeep as much as I do. And now on to the first night of camping. <laughs>
All right, that wraps up the first night with the new build. Really enjoyed this cooking setup, having the stove here, the cutting board here, the spices, kind of this L-shaped kitchen setup, and having the spices up here while I'm cooking just made it a lot of fun. And yeah, really, really happy with everything turned out. Only thing I'm a little bummed out about that I didn't see before is that the propane tank actually sits up against the lift gate and can't go all the way down. Not a huge deal, and I think it'll be an easy fix. I'm just gonna cut a hole in the front runner cutting board that pulls out and the propane will sit underneath and that'll allow the stove to sit flush up against the front runner table. But other than that, everything turned out really well and really happy with the build and the functionality of everything and happy to be done with the staining and the ceiling and all that and ready to spend some nights out of this thing. I know I've got the tent set up but I'm actually gonna sleep in the Jeep tonight. It's probably a really nice night to sleep in the tent with the weather. But I'm very anxious to try out this new mattress and just kind of get a feel for the extra headroom in there and, and how sleeping in the Jeep feels. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the kitchen, get the bed set up and call it a night.
All right, first night of camping out of the new setup is done. Really, really comfortable night's sleep. The extra inch on the foam mattress and then the extra like three to four inches of headspace made a huge difference last night. Also, another huge thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring the build. Really excited for winter to try out an electric blanket with this and some other cool accessories and definitely think I'm gonna make that electric kettle a staple part of my build. It's just super convenient versus having the little propane tanks and takes probably two to 3% of the battery, which is nothing considering how fast it boils water. If you guys have any questions, make sure to throw them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get to those. But other than that, I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.